Hello everyone. Uh, today we want to talk about uh, an interesting topic, which is the uh, implementation of a pushdown automaton in Haskell. How we can implement a PDA in Haskell? That's the topic of today. So, uh, you know, for, to implement a pushdown automata in Haskell, we need first of all to review what was the whole story of the PDA or NPDA, let's say, which was a little bit more uh, general version of the PDA, non-deterministic PDA. Imagine we want to implement an NPDA. An NPDA, actually, that's, check this language. If you remember, well, actually, the PDA was a pushdown automata. Uh, it's a kind of the abstract machine that let us to check if a language is accepted or rejected, okay? So what we had in the machines in here, in this course, in this module, we used to present a machine with a starting state or initial state with the final states. And that's the reason why we show it in the curly braces and some sort of the instruction using the instruction you used to say, if I am on state Q1, if I receive something on the um, head of the tape, and then what do I have in the stack? And then when, uh, to which state I will go and what will happen into the stack, okay? What we want to do is have an implementation of this, this in Haskell that allows us to input a PDA and a string such as this guy and reject or re uh, accept it, okay? So the implementation at the end of the day should be something. If you give the implementation a uh, push on automator, also, if you give the implementation, if you give that a specific function, you are going to implement a string like this guy. And then the output should be one of these two options, accepted or rejected by that PDA, okay? So if that's a language in here, and if that's a string from this language, if that's PDA accepted or rejected, okay? Uh, so how, what could be the solution? At the end of the day, your implementation should be a function like run, uh, that would be the definition of this function, which takes two, which receives two input. If you remember in the Haskell, the, all of the, in the function definition, all the things in here, except for the last one are the input and the last one is the output. Okay, so if I have a function which is called run, this type of receives a PDA data type string, and then finally it should generate something like results, okay? This function takes an input, some representation of the pushdown automata and a string to test for if it is acceptable or not. And then finally it should gives me, it should returns back some sort of the output, which is result, which could be one of two options, accept or reject. So that machine works for you. And if you fit some sort of the string to the machine, it would tell you if it accept that string or if it rejects it, okay? So for example, uh, test if the below PDA called PAL accept or reject this specific string. So let's define, if you remember, let's define this automata using this notation. I have something like that inside the bracket, everything in here. The first thing that I have is the initial state. What is the initial state? And then, the number of final states. In this case, we have only one final state, which is a state two, and the instructions. You remember that was how we used to define a machine, a strike machine, uh, like the push on automata. If we have the above PDA PAL loaded into the memory, we can run call as follows, run PAL the string. So the result will be print, will be to print either accept or reject. All we need to do now is to flesh out the missing part of the code. Okay, so that's the only definition of the code. If you back to the previous slide, that's the declaration and definition of the code, the, the function uh, we want in Haskell to implement a PDA. And that's the way actually we use that function. We say function run, the PDA and the string we want to test, and the result will be acceptance. But what about the inside of the run function. That's exactly the main purpose of this session. We want to go through that and see how we can implement uh, a PDA in Haskell. Okay. <clears throat> if you put a little bit closer look at run, it would be something like that. Like I said, it will receive a machine PDA. 
it will receive a string and it will generate a result. So run takes in a parameter of PD, type PDA and the parameter of type string and output type result. Only one of the above, one of these uh, different types are some sort of the uh, predefined types inside the Haskell, right? So the other to the PD and, and results, they are missing. So that means we need to define PDA and result ourselves as data, new data type. To do this, we first need to learn how to declare new types in Haskell, how to add our own data structure that aren't already predefined in Haskell. In previous lab sheet, actually we used to work on how to define our, you know, custom defined data type in Haskell. So you should be familiar with that, how to define that from the module and from the lab. So there are two ways to do this, to define the PDA data type and to define the result data type. We have two solution, solution in here, using the keyword type and using the keyword data. So it's at some stage, we use type. At some stage, at some other stage, we use data to uh, define these specific data types. Okay, so let's see how we can use type to define new types in Haskell. The below is how we define the PDA. Okay, the PDA was the push tone automator. You remember the push tone automator we have uh, consists of the initial state, the final state, and the transitions. The initial state is a number, a state initial, what is the initial state of the machine? It is zero, one, two, whatever. So it is an integer. The final state, it is integer, but like you said, it could, the machine could have more than one final state. So then that's the case of, uh, we'll have a list of integers and then transitions would be list of different things inside that. So that's, this means that the PDA must be a triple why triple? Because we have a combination of different types in here. Okay, so and then an integer representing the start state, a list of integers representing the final states. Take care of the S in here. A list of transitions, i.e. the PDA instructions, okay? They have not defined the transition instruction yet. And this is another part of the code needed to be implemented. So we need to say, Okay, we are, we are familiar with integers in here, but it looks like we are facing with a new type in here, which is not kind of a pre-built, uh, built-in definition, data definition inside Haskell in Prolog. So we need to define that as well, okay? So what could be the transition? Transition is, you remember that inside a specific, uh, if we go in here, you remember that it's inside a specific, um, uh, pushed on automata, the transition or instructions are like that. You are in a specific state, you have this symbol on the uh, head of the tape and whatever you have inside the stack and then you will go to a new state and what would change inside the stack. You will add something to stack which is push, you will get something from the stack or remove from the stack which is called pop or you will leave it unchanged, okay? So that's the whole thing we need inside a transition. So the type transition then would be, definition would be something like that. We will take the first part inside another triple, Y triple, because you have an integer string and a string in here, different type of data type in here altogether is a, a, uh, is a triple, okay? So, so you have a triple of these guys in here, and then also you'll have another triple in here. The first member of the pair will be a triple made of an integer from a state, and then it would be correct input symbol, which is a string, and then would be an, another string, which is current top of stack. What do you have on the top of your stack in here? And the second part also would be what state you are going to go and what string you will have on the top of the stack. So that would be the definition of the transition. So by far we have defined the transition and we have defined the machine data type as PDA, which is state, final initial state, final state and transitions, where transition by itself are a, a, a triple like this and a pair like this, which they, you have different things inside that, okay? So what's the next? Okay, so if I have a PDA with the term instructions like that. How do we represent this in Haskell using the type 
uh, transition we just defined. It should be something like this, isn't it? So uh, using this definition, what could be the first thing? The first thing would be state one corresponding to Q1. The head of the, the, the head of tape would be A, what is we have in here. And um, stack is empty, nothing is in there, so that's empty. Then we will go to state one. <clears throat> And also we will push A in here. So as you can see, all this instruction can be represented using, using this type definition, which is type transitions. So parent state, the head of tape, the top of the stack, new state, top of the stack. So everything in here can be represented in here, as you can see. So far, we have the following code. <clears throat> we have the function definition. Function run takes PDA and a string and then gives us returns actually the result. We have a data definition of type PDA, which is like that, and the transition. To set up the PDA data, to set up the PDA data structure with an actual PDA in this instance, we simply give it a start state Q1, final, and transition, something like that. So that would be our PAL. Or PDA machine. The start state is one. That's exactly this definition. The final states, which is just one, one final state in here, is two. And the transition is uh, a list of different uh, elements in here. The first one is the first instruction, the second instruction, and so on. And then finally, you close this list and you close this uh, bracket, this uh, parenthesis in here. Okay, so that's actually the way we define this PDA using the definition we have defined already. When we have the run function fleshed out, we can simply call it now. We can say run pal this machine and let me know if this string is accepted by this machine or not. That's what I actually want we, we want to get to at the end of the, the story, okay? Right, so we, Defined actually the PDA data type in here, but still we have the result. We have not defined the result yet. The result, to define the result, we can use the other way we define the data type, the custom data type was. We don't use type in here, we use the data only in here. So we use the data result, which could be accept or reject. This allows only two possible values for something of type result, either accept or reject. So that's completely clear. So that's the way we define the data type result in our problem, okay? And then to be able to print them, to show them, etc., we will drive it from show, okay? We will complete this definition by adding driving show, which means adding the key in the keyword driving show means that this is, uh, that this type can be converted to a text for the sake of printing, etc. okay? So by far we have defined all the definition we have done all the definition we needed. We defined the PAL, PDA, the machine, and we defined the result. So everything is ready. Perhaps we can go inside the function definition slowly, okay? So far we have defined all the things we needed. How should we represent the computation involved in deciding if a PDA accept or reject a string, however, the strings, however. So that means, okay, the definition are finished. Let's talk about what could be the body of function. Another useful data structure, we need to work out the computation involved in deciding if a string should be accepted or rejected. Let's define another Haskell data structure for that. Do you guess what is that? What is the thing you want to talk about that? Okay, let's go through this example to understand exactly what you mean. <clears throat> uh, imagine we have a non-deterministic PDA accepting this language, which is the reverse exactly. I mean, reverse it's the string and it's reverse are equal i mean uh, no matter from which direction you read the string a b b a b b a so if you read it from the right to left it would be again a b b a b b a so that's the machine they have the instructions final state uh, initial state and the final state and if you remember we used to draw the configuration it was a configuration you remember and the configuration means the machine is in state Q1. What is the tape of the head of the tape in here? A. And what we have, what is on the top of the stack and what we have in the stack in general. That was the configuration and compute we used to 
show the computation in this way. Okay. So another way to visualize the computation for ADB, ADBA is just to configuration. So instead of trying to show this in programming, it is impossible to, you know, project everything in this kind of state diagram or uh, visualization. Instead, we need to define something for it. Okay. So we use the term uh, configuration. So to visualize the computation, it is to use compu configurations. Configuration will help with implementing a PDA Haskell. A PDA configuration simply represents what we usually draw in the sketch. Configuration format should be something like that. In the first part, it says what is the current state. Okay. The second part is what is the remaining input string? What is the remaining input string in this case? The whole string, because we have not read anything at all. And the current stack component, you need to tell, uh, you need to show what do you have inside the stack, in your stack. So it is the configuration. This configuration is exactly same as this uh, computation visualization we used to do already, okay? So for example, if we say the configuration is this guy, that means we are in state one. We have this string on the tape, <clears throat> which we should read. And the stack is empty, right? So that's the whole story of in here. So let's see what will happen. So if we are then, let's go a little bit to the whole story. If we are in state one, we have the whole string A, B, B, A, B, B, A, and the stack is empty. What we should do? We are in state one, we receive A. We are in state one, we receive A, and stack is empty. So probably we can take rule one. If you can take rule one, we will stay in state Q1 and we will push one A into the stack. So the new state should be one. Since we move one uh, character, one symbol to the right, that means we shouldn't have the initial character. So the rest of the characters and symbol on the tape should be BBA, BBA. So that's the rest of the characters and symbols. And that's the belonging of um our stack isn't it if you remember we say the current state the state uh, the remaining input string and the current stack content okay so what has happened in here the current state the remaining and the content of the, the stack in here and then if you apply all the rules in here you will see if i'm in rule if i'm in here then i'm in state one I receive B, I have A in the stack. I'm in state one, I receive B, I have A in the stack. If I use rule two, which I'm able to use, that means I should stay in Q1. I should push one B into that, okay? So I will push another B to the stack. See, the stack already had A. I will push another B, which is BA. I will get rid of one of the B in here. Why? Because according to this uh, transition, or instruction, I will move one character to the right. So if I will move one character to the right, I won't have the first B. And then at the same time, I will stay in a state one. Why? Because I'm going from state Q1 to Q1. So you can work out the rest of the whole story in here. Uh, like I said, exactly. I am in one, I receive B, I have B. I am in one, I receive B, I have. When it comes uh, empty character, that means whatever. That means whatever. So still I can use the, uh, I can use this notation. Although this uh, instruction is also applicable, but we are using uh, this instruction. If you remember when it was the matter of the PDA, the deterministic PDA, we had only one definition at every situation. Uh, but in NPDA, we, we could have multiple definition at any specific situation and a state input etc we are okay so um, and for the pda deterministic one we could make decision if that a specific state that we have a specific transition which can help us to go toward the scanning the whole uh, string input string and get to the final state or not in non-pda that was the matter of if we can find any path toward the end of the story and telling this uh, the, and returning the answer of accepted or rejected. So you need to only find one solution. So just we 
follow the rule to int. Yeah, so you follow the rule to, that means again, you should get rid of one of the character of the remaining string because we move right. So we won't have B in here and we will push another V and you can continue. And at the end of the day, you will get to a situation that you are in state two, which is the final state. The remaining string is empty and the stack is empty. And what does it mean? That was the uh, condition for accepting an input string by machine. So the machine accepts the string if you read all the symbols on the input string and also uh, your stack is empty and you'll get to the final state. So this string then is accepted and it is supposed to be accepted. Why? Because the language is a language you can read the string from both sides and they are the same. And that's the case for this specific string, okay? So let's recap. Why far to be able to implement the things we decided to represent the computation visualization uh, using a notation which is called configuration and the configuration is the current state remaining input string and the current stack contents okay right so we uh, listed all the configuration we have for this specific machine and this specific string we can represent each of the computation above step above by defining a configuration in our Haskell code as you can see so we can define it as a configuration. This configuration we talk about in here can be defined as a data type. So we define the type configuration, which is an integer and a string and a string. The first integer is the current state. Like we say, this guy is what? This guy is the remaining string and this guy is the content of the stack. So we define this data type configuration now. So what we have by far, we define the function we define the uh, PDA, the machine by itself. We define the transitions inside the machine. We define the result as the output for the function. And we define the configuration now, which shows how machine uh, goes along the way toward the end of the story and say it is accepted or it is rejected. We have a lot of what we need to implement. By far, everything has been the definition. We have not talked about the content of the code, the codes, the body of the code of uh, function run. We need to talk about that too. A main part of the solution is to implement the run, fun run function. You need to flesh out how this should return the correct results, accept or reject for any PDA. Any input is being made of the characters of the correct alphabet. As a start, here is a possible definition for run. When you say run of this machine, and this string could be run prime of this configuration, right? And this guy all together. So the next step is to define run prime and other and the other function needed to run the prime. So this way, uh, somehow we are trying to see what is happening inside the run function. Let's go ahead. We will see what happens. Okay, let's begin with this to understand how we should implement this uh, function, the run function. Let's begin with the start configuration one. This is string and empty. That's in the beginning. We are in the initial state, the whole string and the stack is empty. Okay, we need to design a function that can take in a configuration and a transition and result a configuration. That's the thing we, knew, we used to do in here, right? We had a specific configuration. Let's back a little bit. We had a specific configuration in here. We had a specific uh, transition. And then based on that, we need to say what could be the transition. What was usually the way we used to calculate the thing? We used to say, okay, we are in a configuration like this. Based on that configuration, we decide we are on uh, one of which of the instruction works for us. And then based on that, we used to calculate the new configuration the current configuration one of these rules rule one for example and the new configuration so in implementation the first thing we need to calculate is to calculate the new configuration so we need to have the current configuration we need to have the transition and we need to say to which configuration we will go that's called the step we define a new function which is called the step it takes a configuration and a transition and it tells us which configuration we can go. This will return a list of configuration of length one. So we'll have only one configuration inside that. 
if the transition can be applied to the con uh, configuration and the empty list of the transition cannot be applied. So what is the situation? If you are in this specific situation, you are in this configuration, you are in this specific state, you have this string and you have this stack and you can match to one of the strings, two cases would happen. Either you can match to one of the instructions and you can tell what could be the new configuration or you cannot match any of the instruction to the current configuration and then you will say, okay, machine will halt in here, we are not in the final state, the stack is not empty, we have not read through the whole string on the tape, so that's the reason why you say it is rejected. So these two cases would happen, right? So the step function will receive a configuration, a transition, and generates a configuration. If it is something valid, I mean, if that for that specific configuration, there is a transition to calculate the new configuration, then it is valid, then we can calculate the configuration. But if there is no transition for that specific configuration, this guy would be empty. Okay, let's begin to define a function step. Let's see how function step can work that will apply transition to your configuration, okay? To make it a little bit more manageable, the code, let's minimize the definition for configuration. Instead of saying, uh, instead of saying for configuration, uh, integer string string, or instead of saying um, current state, remaining input string and current stack uh, content, etc., we will minimize it to ABC. So the current state, remaining string, and the stack content. The transition, you remember, we used to have five different things. Current state, what is on the uh, head of the tape, what do we have in the stack, to which state we will go, and what would happen for the stack. So instead of showing all these things, we will show it in D, E, F, G, H, in this case, to make it a little bit more manageable. How do we want to implement it, okay? So the function should, the function that we want to define is something like that. It would be a configuration, transition, configuration. So that means if we receive input A, B, C, if we receive a configuration, if and if we receive a transition, then you remember the function definition in Haskell. You'll say for inputs, then equal to outputs, and we used to have guards. If this condition happens, that would be the output. Otherwise, that would be empty. Why? Because we already discussed that. You remember, I said, if for this specific configuration, there is a transition, which we can apply to this configuration, then we will have a configuration. Otherwise, it would be empty. So that would be the whole implementation of the step. That's the definition. And then for this input, the configuration and transition, then if condition is satisfied, then uh, actually, we will have a new configuration. If it is not, then it would be empty. Okay, so that's the whole story. Let's look at how the stack changes. So, okay, to understand what should happen in here, we need to complete the function step. Function step is just like a pseudocode. We don't have all the information by far. We need to complete, we need to find out what is condition and we need to find out what is this part, okay? So to understand what is that, we need to uh, look at some, some different state, different things. What are these different things? We need to first of all, to see what happens to the stacks, what happens to the strings and so on. You remember, you see in here, some something is happening uh, on the input string. The string is getting smaller, smaller, smaller. Something is happening to the stack. We need to understand the logic of these changes to be able to implement it, okay? So that's the whole story. So what about the stack changes? In terms of the stack changes, let's see what happens. Given our start configuration, how the stack changes depends on the kind of the rule we apply. Exactly, so you are in a specific configuration, what happens to the stack? That's exactly up to the instructions and the rule. Let's see what happens. And some rules, for example, rule one, you push something onto the stack. See, the, the head of the, the top of the stack was blank. We push something into that. So at some stage, for some rules, actually we push something into the stack. For some rules, no alter the stack. The stack is uh, will remain 
the same, okay? For example, the rule number three. In rule number three, you see exactly the stack is remained unchanged. And for rule five, for example, you see uh, the stack is not changed, okay? So the, that's the whole thing that happens to the stack, okay? Question, what determines whether a rule will, uh, a rule will push, pop, or not alter the stack? So three different things happens to the stack. One thing that happens is we will push something to the stack. The other thing that happens, we will leave it unchanged. And the third thing is we will pop something from the stack. So can we tell me what is the logic behind any of these things? So the answer to this question, what determines whether a rule will push, pop, or not change, is whether we have empty, non-empty string on the left-hand side and right-hand side of the string. See, if we have non-empty uh, string in the left hand side and right hand side etc uh, let's go through the all the cases all the instruction in here we have seven rules of instruction so look at this one uh, let's annotate each rule below with what it done into the stack okay in this case we will push so when empty string so when when pushes happens actually when empty string on the left hand side in here a non-empty string on the right-hand side, that's the time actually we have pushed something onto the stack. See, push, empty, non-empty, empty, non-empty. Non that's the only times in this machine actually we have pushed. What about the pop? When we do actually the pop, for the pop, when non-empty string in the left-hand side and empty string on the right-hand side, okay? So non-empty string, in the left hand side inside the stack and that's empty in the right hand side so that's the time of the pop and what about the changes it is when both sides are empty when it is empty and empty that's the time we do nothing so we wanted to know uh, when a stack happens so let's back a little bit recap it so we defined everything in here that was the time to define run function to define the run function, first of all, we needed to define a function to tell us if we are in a specific configuration and what transition can be applied to it and calculate the current uh, transition. To do that, we define that in this way. We said if that's the input, the configuration and transition, the output based on this condition would be a new configuration or it could be an empty list. Okay. And then we said, let's see what could be this condition to calculate to understand what could be this calculation and condi conditions we decided to see what happens what is the logic of the things that happen onto the stack we realized sometimes we push something to the stack sometimes we leave it unchanged sometimes we pop something from the stack and then we analyzed and we realized when the empty left hand side uh, a string when the left hand side the string is empty Right hand side also is empty, right hand side and left hand side of this instruction, I mean. Okay, so there is no change to stack. If left hand side is empty, right hand side is not empty, we will push, and the other way around, we will pop it. Okay, so what about the remaining string changes? So now that's the time to see, okay, we find, we found out the logic of changes into the stack. We need to find out the logic of changes into the remaining string. So let's analyze it to see what happens. Okay, so let's look at different cases. Okay, given our start configuration, how the remaining string changes depends on the kind of the rule we apply. We can apply rule one, head reader moves one to the right, first character removed, removed from the remaining. We can take Hey, rule three, head moves one to the right, and first character removed from the remaining string. We can go towards rule five, head stays where it is, remaining string not, not altered, okay? So let's see what happens. So let's look at the remaining string only for a minute. Question, what is it that determines whether the head reader will move one place to the right or stay still and don't move? So what is that? The left-hand side transition string being empty or not empty versus this guy. So the things, again, let's look at the situation. Look at this one. In all these cases, we will move right. Only in this case, we don't do anything. We don't move. 
So what is the difference between all these cases? If you see the remaining string, if it is empty, that means we don't move to right. Otherwise, we will move right. Okay, so the left-hand side transition a string being empty or not empty is the thing which tell us if we should move right or not. Remaining string change possibilities in configuration, uh, for example, like this configuration. Empty transition, that means something like that. Then the head does not move right. Nothing gets deleted, deleted from the remaining string. Or if it is non-empty, something like that, then the head moves right. So that's the logic of remaining string. That's the logic of remaining string. So how these guys are changed based on the instruction and rules. If you have something in here and it is not empty, that means you will move right and you will get rid of the character, current character. And that's the reason why you can see him here. He'll get a smaller, a smaller, a smaller, a smaller until he gets here. So then, since it is empty, that means we don't move right. We don't delete the strings. And that's the reason why we stop in here. If we didn't have that rule in here, we will fall into an infinite loop. So that's the good news in here. Okay, so that was the rules for the uh, remaining string. So what about the matching cases? What about the matching cases? Pattern matching, you remember in uh, Haskell, when we want to do to find the function, we used to use the pattern matching. We used to uh, define the function for different cases, different patterns, okay? So pattern matching for empty and non-empty string will be useful to allow us to define how a step should behave when the transition has an empty or non-empty string in the left-hand side or right-hand side. So empty string, simply we will show that with empty. Non-empty string of any length, we will show that with B, B, S. You remember that if we have a list of more than one character, we will show that the first character and the rest. And for non-empty string of length one, we will show that what simple character, okay? So let's see, now we want to see what could be this pattern matching? What could be this pattern now? We are familiar with this one, which is otherwise, and the result would be empty list, or we are not still, we have not clarified this part, this guy still. Okay, so let's go forward to see what happens. Okay, so let's see what should be in here. For example, let's write the part of the step function that takes in configuration with an empty uh, input stack C. That was like that, remember? That was the configuration and a transition and then another transition configuration based on this condition. Now, to write the configuration, to write the pattern matching in here, different patterns, we need to go through these uh, different things, right? So, Yeah, so an empty input stack C and a transition made up of an empty string E, an empty, that's a specific case. For example, let's write the part of the step function that takes in a configuration with this situation. An input uh, stack C, C is input, okay, an empty stack on the left hand side. Of course, the transition, the stack is empty. An empty stack on the right-hand side, that means the stack is not changed. So that means we have had a, uh, an empty stack in the configuration, so instruction that the, the stack is empty and it doesn't change the stack, okay? So example of that would be like that. Where you said Q2, uh, string is empty, right? So, and the stack is empty and the stack is not changed. So what could it be then? Then the function would be a step of A, B, empty, D, empty, and empty, G, empty. So the condition and transition condition above is some set of condition that must be true for the transition to be applied to condition, okay? Right. So if C, E, F, and H are empty as follows, that would be the case, what will the new configuration look like? If the st stack is empty, and then for the transition that we don't have any character in here on the tape. The stack is empty and the stack will be remain empty. What could be the new configuration? The new configuration is we will go to new state G. We will keep the input string on the tape as B as it was. 
and also we will keep the uh, transition we will keep the stack empty as it was do you remember the, when it was the case so that was one of the cases of pattern matching okay what the condition that what are the condition that allow us to decide if the rule can be applied if that a specific case what is the condition so we try to make it a little bit clear more clear and easier actually in this case we said if that's the input if we have this configuration we have we are in a specific state we have something on the tape and the stack is empty then a specific transition like that can be applied to it there is a state d uh, we receive character empty and then stack is empty we will go to state g and stack is empty so what could it be it could be the new state would be g because we want to go from here to here and we will keep the remaining string b because we didn't do anything with the, we didn't push anything to the stack we didn't pop anything from the stack we didn't push particularly since we didn't push anything to the stack and since we don't move right because of what we said by far so that means the remaining string would be the same and we didn't do anything with the push with the stack so the stack would be the same so that's it and what is the condition when it happens it happens only if i'm in this case and this transition matches to this case when this transition matches to this case the transition matches to this configuration if the state is equal to the state of my current configuration and also the stack content is same as the stack content the stack content is same as the stack content yes but to be able to use this translation to apply the transition to this configuration the current state of transition should be equal to current state of mine so then it would be a equal to d so that's some kind of a, a simple pattern uh, matching we have written for the step so that means if you are you have this configuration and this transition then the new transition would be like that the new transition the stack would be like this the remaining string would be like that why because we have not changed anything to the stack that means we have not deleted anything from the uh, remaining string so that means the remaining string would be set the same and to be able to apply the transition to this configuration the current state of the configuration and the transition should be the same so based on that not note that a step assume b is not an empty string so we don't need to check this so of course if the if the state is uh, if the remaining string is empty we don't have any transition or instruction for that in here so we assume that in here of course you need to check it check the b shouldn't be empty but not inside the step function but outside the step function okay a step with all non-empty strings so by far we checked if uh, strings are empty we check this case a step with all empty string if we have we are facing the function a step when all the strings are empty a stack is empty and the transition also faces with the uh, empty string okay or well, what about if it is non-empty string something like that we are in state q2 we receive a on the head of the tape we have a in the stack and the stack would be so at the other extreme so we have seen one extreme case of the server every string in the configuration and transition is empty except b which is never empty okay at the other extreme is the case where all the strings are non-empty i.e for, for example c e f and h are non-empty something like that so what should happen in here so again if we face if we have the step function in here with the configuration and transition as the input what would be the output configuration still that's the general representation of the function we use pattern matching to specify c f c e f and h all as non-empty okay so to do that we need to work you remember in the machine when we wanted to do that we used to say okay uh, what is on the top of the stack so because of that we need to break the c to c and cs on top of the stack okay 
And what is the top of the stack in here? That's okay. But this part, we needed to break it into two different parts, the initial and the rest. Okay, what about the output configuration then? So, example configuration would be something like that, Q2, the remaining string, uh, top of the stack, and the transition would be if you are in Q2, you receive A on the uh, tape, and on the top of the stack you have A, you will go to Q2, and you will push a B inside that, okay? So what would happen in here? What would happen in here? Uh, find the con condition needed to be true for the condition, blah, blah, etc. Okay, so first of all, this time let's work with the condition. So when we can use, when we can, that's the question, when we can apply this transition to this configuration. The time we can apply the transition to configuration that the transition, the state, the current state and the state of configuration are the same. Okay. And then we say uh, on the top of the, on the head of the tape, I have B, it should be exactly the same as E. And also on the top of the stack, whatever I have should be exactly on top of the stack in here. So that's the condition first. In the case which C, E and F and H are not empty, okay? So otherwise, what, whatever else. So that means if this condition is satisfied, then I can apply this transition to this configuration. Then what should I do then? If that's the case, I should change the state from R to G. So that's the state G then. Then if that's the case, I need to move one character toward the right and get rid of the B. So the remaining guys would be BS. And that means I need to push the things that I have removed from the tape inside that. I need to push, I need to push this guy, whatever, whatever that this guy, this instruction tell me, push it into the stack. So whatever I have had into the stack, I will push H for it. I will get rid of C and I will change it. C is equal to F. That means if you have had F on the top of the stack, that means you need to push, you need to push one H on top of that. Okay. So that's the definition then. If you are facing with non-empty strings, okay? So the step function would be like that. So how many cases do you have? How many different cases do we have? Two, we discussed two extreme cases. One extreme case is when actually all the strings are empty. Stack in configuration is empty. Uh, tape of the head of the tape is empty. Uh, top of the stack in the current the state is empty and the future state is empty. So that's the case, one extreme. The other extreme is the situation where nothing is empty. All of them are corrected. So that would be the case. So we should have a combination of that. So what about if, for example, this stack is empty, but these guys are not empty and so on. For example, this one is not empty. This one is not empty because it should be equal to C, but this guy is empty. So what should we do? So we are facing the different cases. So to do that, we need to consider all the possible cases, all the possible combination for C, E, F, and H. For C, E, H, and F. For C, E, F, and H, right? Okay. To do that, we need to draw a truth table. It's a useful way to work out all the possible combination of empty and non-empty string in the instruction C and transition variable, blah, blah, blah. Since we only need to check if strings are empty or non-empty, we need to check that. We need to say, okay, each of, what are each of these guys? If they are empty or non-empty, that would be the case. It is not important for us if, for example, it's not important for us if, for example, C is not empty, is if the alphabet is uh, like, I don't know, we have A, B, C, D, uh, multiple characters into the alphabet, then what is, which of those specific characters of the alphabet is in here? It's not important because uh, we can examine it and do something with that in here, in this condition. We don't need to check. Only we need to check if it is empty or not. So we need to check out of C, E, F, and H, which one is empty, which one is not empty. Okay, so we have two cases then. And how many variables do we have? We have four variables. 
So out of four variables and two possible values for each of the variables, we have 16 different possible configuration which are not too much, which are zero and one. Then we can have a table like that. We can say in the configuration, we have a stack. In the configuration, we have the stack part, okay? In the transition, we have left-hand side and right-hand side. In the left-hand side, we have these two guys. And in the right-hand side, we have this guy, okay? So that was the uh, truth table. And that's the action we take. What happens to the reader? Do we go toward the right, delete one character from that? Do we push something into the stack, leave it unchanged, pop something from the stack, and so on? So that's the, uh, that's the whole story in here. So that would be the truth table. So the step function for these variables in here, which, which tell us if a stack in the configuration is empty, the stack uh, he head of the tape is empty, is empty. Uh, top of the stack of the current state is empty, and the stack in the new state would be empty also. Reader does nothing, and nothing would happen to stack. You can check all these cases. So this one is the one of the extremes we already discussed, and this one is the other extreme we already discussed. In this case, for example, we move right, and we replace the whatever we have on the character, whatever we have on the top of the stack in here to here. So you will have a truth table like that, okay? Then we wrote a step for case one and case 16 in the previous slide already. And other cases are still needed to be written. Okay, what about the other cases? That was the case, for example, case 15. If you have, uh, if in your configuration in the stack you have something, it is non-empty. If in your in transition in left hand side uh, for the head of the tape it is non empty a stack is non empty also and the stack should be empty that means we should move right and we should pop something from the stack so how to mention how to show that that's the way we should show that first of all the condition for the condition we need to see first of all the state should be equal very similar to what we said in here first of all. The state should be similar. A should be similar to D, right? And then B should be equal to E. What does it mean? That means the character that I'm reading from the tape, it should be the character of this specific transition, okay? And also the top of the um, stack for my configuration should be exactly the same as the top of the stack in left-hand side of the transition. So that's for the condition. And what will happen for the right side then for the right side if that condition is satisfied then what will happen the thing that will happen since this state is equal to this state that means this transition is applied to this configuration that means the state should be changed from a to g so we'll go to state g so based on this case in the uh, truth table we will move right that means we will get rid of one character inside this remaining that means b will goes uh, will be deleted and we will have bs as the remaining and also that means we will pop something from the string and we don't push the thing that was on the top so i will have whatever i have had inside the stack in current configuration in the new configuration we will pop the first character on the top so that would be the rest so that's a pattern matching for this specific case right so that's a pattern matching for this specific case. So define function step in a large part of the definition for a PDA. So you need to define all the pattern matching. You need to say what will happen for all these states in here. And then after doing that, you can check your results. You can check if that's the current configuration and that's the transition, uh, does the does whatever you have defined there creates a new configuration like that? So then test a step again on the written configuration, each with some transition of PAL, then the subsequent configuration that result from that and so on. You might begin to see the path. So after so that, in this step, actually we are testing the function a step. And then after checking that, we are in page 37. After checking that, you will see a slowly this story happens, 
let me see where was that this story happens here you will see a slowly this configuration using a specific transition generates this configuration for us and then this configuration this configuration and finally you get to here and you will say okay the string is accepted okay we are in page 37 okay so the next step then was to test the function step with all the cases so I think one is one more step to handle empty string. You remember we said we suppose B is not empty. We remember we suppose suppose the B is not empty in here. The B, which is whatever we have on the tape, is not empty. Why? Because we said if it is empty, it is exactly uh, this case. If it is empty, it is exactly this case. So we imagine there is no none empty there, and we say. Uh, it is not the responsibility of the responsibility of the step function to check if it is empty or non-empty. We say that, but we say it should be somewhere checked to make sure if it is empty or non-empty. So we can add one more condition in here to reflect that. So you remember already in the truth table we had something like that in truth table. You remember we used to start from C inside the configuration. We used to start from C. Okay. So we can add another column in here and it can add st in uh, string as B in here. Okay, string B. So configuration has two columns now. If you want to add it to the table, your table will have, instead of 16, would have 17. It would be uh, zero X, which means zero. And then the rest of the things are X, 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 which means you don't care. And that means it is it holds uh, not available something like that and then when it is one which is non-empty then what would happen sorry one for b in here and then non-empty and then the rest of the whole list so if you want to combine both um, uh, both tables together two tables together now we need to define another function which is steps the steps once you are happy with the step, write the function steps to take in a configuration as before, but with a list of all transition in path. Okay, so we'll say a configuration, a transition, and configurations. That would be the function. What does it mean? That means uh, if I have this configuration and all the transitions in here, so that's the first transition, the second transition, and all. What is the difference between the steps then? The steps is a step, but the difference is you will have all the transitions. If you look at the implementation again, uh, see a step takes only one single element. It doesn't take a string, uh, a list, sorry. Only one single transition. That means if I'm in a specific configuration and if I receive a specific transition, what would be the configuration? Would be a configuration or an empty, okay? We discussed that. now. We want to write a function which is called steps. <clears throat> the steps takes all possible configura uh, transitions. So, for example, for that a specific configuration and all the transition, what would be the configurations? It should written a list of all res resulting next step configuration. So this time, the output wouldn't be just a list with single entity, single array. It's not the case. Why? Because we have different instructions in here, because we have different transitions in here. What does it mean? It means for this configuration and this transition, what would be the new configuration? For this configuration and this transition, what would be the next step, next configuration? Okay. Should uh, this should return something like that? So a uh, list of rules are specified in PAL, for example. Again, if I substitute this guy with this guy to reflect, I have all the list and transition in here. Then the output should be something like that. It could be this transition, it could be this trans sorry, this configuration, this configuration, this configuration, and so on. And it could be even empty, right? So that would be the whole story. That's the next step, okay. Then we need to define another function, which is accept. Accept needs to take all the configuration and an integer and a boolean, which says if it is accepted or not. Next, we need to be able to check, to check if a list of configurations includes at least one state, that means we can accept the string. That's kind of 
what we used to do visually on the paper. We used to say, okay, for this specific configuration, there is uh, there is a solution that means from this configuration using this transition, you can go to another transition. So that I accept actually works that way for us, which tell us if for a specific configuration you have, um, is there a specific state that will help us to accept it or not. Okay, it should be the case. So beside the list of configuration to check, it will be useful if the function also checks in the final state. We need to check if we are in the final state or not. Okay, so to test this function, you will say uh, the configurations, one configuration, two, three, and so on, and then two configuration, and then uh, should output false. What does it mean? What does it mean? It means if I have, what is the integer in here? So that means if in this case, I will put all this uh, configuration in here and I would tell, is there anything to, uh, to lead us to, the, to, to accept it? The result would be false. Would it be something like that? It would be true, okay? Um, yeah, so what, why in this case the answer is false? Why in this case the answer is false? What does it mean? It means if I, am, I have these configurations, the configuration I'm in state A, I have the remaining stuffs in here, and that's on the stack. I have, there is another configuration, which is state 2, uh, which is, what is that in here? Uh, I have this remaining string, I have this on the stack, and so on. And I want to know if for state 2, if this configuration will let us to accept the string. Do you think it is accepted? The string is accepted by Pushdown Automata if you have finished the string already, and if, you, if your stack is empty, and if you are in the final state. We are in the final state, we are examining the final state too, okay? But none of this configuration, the remaining string is empty. And none of this configuration, the stack is empty too, okay? So that means for all this configuration, if we are in this configuration, the string is not accepted, it is rejected. So the output would be the false then, Boolean. But if we have a configuration like that, and we are in state two, that means the string is accepted. Why? Because we are in the case that we are in the final state, the remaining string is empty and the stack is also empty, right? So that's the function of accept. Accept actually check that things for us. Check inside the configuration to make sure if it is accepted or not. And the find path is the final function that actually tries to find a path from the beginning to the end. If you back to the very beginning, in here, in here, that's the path. This configuration, this one configuration, and so on until you finally get to in here. That was the function of uh, accept. Accept is working in this place. Path try to find this path for us, and a step tries to calculate from any state, any configuration I should put to what new configuration. Okay, so then the function find path is like that. Next, we find the function that takes in a list of configuration in a PDA and tries to find the path to acceptance. Think of the list of input configuration as the configuration reached so far. To begin with, this, this list will simply be the start configuration. Before applying the PDA transitions uh, to get the next config, we can check if an input configuration already is an accept and so on and blah, blah. And we need to use the next step. So look, let's look at that. So if uh, I have something like that, this configuration and path uh, should output accept, what could be the result? And for this one, if that's the case, should output accept. That's the case, should output reject. If you are, if you are in configuration like that, you are in state two, you have this string and you have the empty for this machine, the result should be rejected. That means it cannot find the path. And for this guy also, again, if you are in state one, if you have something like that, this guy also should output the reject. And finally, we are in the function run prime. 
function run prime all that needs to be done now is to use run prime to call find path correctly and finally test run as follows so you say run this guys uh, that's the function for example we will say this is string in this function but if you rem if i remember it was pal and string so that's the mistake in here it should be the machine uh, the push down automata and the string in here and then accept and reject and you remember the run was something like what we mentioned in here that's the run in here see that's the configuration and a transition etc so it helps us with the uh, fine path okay so let's recap what we talk about so in this uh, video we wanted to talk about how we can implement the push down automata in haskell to implement the push down automata we said it should be a function something like that you should have a function which takes two input from you, PDA, a string, and the result, right? And we say these characters, and we say, okay, the machine, uh, the push down automata is defined something like that. We can call it PAL, for example, in this case, and the output should be something accept or reject. But then we say inside this uh, parameter we have defined inside the definition of function run some of the parameters are not defined pda and result are not defined so we decided we started by defining these parameters we designed pda using a triple like that which is integer integer and transitions later we realized we need to define the transition too we define the transition using this uh, element of five different pieces and then afterward we define the uh, we showed how the transition works, something like that for this specific real case. And then uh, we said, uh, we recapped by here and said what has happened by far. Then we defined the result. We said result is defined by the data type, accept and reject would be the cases of this data type. And then we said, finally, we can derive it from the show to be able to print it, etc. And then we said, that's the whole thing. To uh, calculate to implement the run function in here we needed to understand how we can uh, present how we can uh, notif uh, how we can define a notation for the computation on the paper usually we do the computation this way but later we say in this case for the haskell we define the config configuration like that the computation we change it to configuration word and we represent it like that okay so and then we said for that specific string the configuration would be something like this guys okay until we say if the string is uh, accepted or rejected okay and then we said we need to define the type configuration that's an abstract definition but for the Haskell, we need to define it. That's the definition of the configuration in here. We define the configuration. Then we said, okay, now that's the time to define the function run. For the function run, it should be defined based on the run prime, which is like that. And then we said we need to start to see what transition ha happens actually in here. We started with two, with defining a function, which is a step. That function step takes a configuration, a transition, and generates a new configuration for us. So it would be two uh, extreme cases we discussed. One extreme case is when everything is empty. Okay, so we went to here, we analyzed different cases to see when the changes happens into the stack, actually when we push the things into the stack, pop from the stack and leave it unchanged. And also we discussed how the changes into remaining string happens and what is the criteria. And based on that, we try to <laughs> define the function a step. And then finally, we realize that's up to the uh, matter of these specific things of A, B, C, D, E, F, etc. in here. That's the matter of that's the matter of these things. C, D, C, E, F, and H. These four uh, parameters are important for us. And then based on that, we started talking about two extreme cases when everything is empty c e f and h are empty so that was the case we found the pattern matching for that case we said that thing would happen that's the conditions and that's the output configuration for that and also we went for another case with none of these guys are empty none of c uh, f c e f and h are uh, empty or they are non-empty 
So based on that, we tried to understand what could be the output. We calculated the conditions and also we calculated what could be the output configuration based on the uh, machine we have in hand. And then finally, we said we have the other cases and we said out of the, all the four characters in four variables we have in here, C, E, F, and H, we said they could be empty or non-empty, zero or one, four different variables. Each of them have two values, so we have, we'll have two uh, power four, which is 16 different cases, and we say we can define a, a truth table for all different cases, and this, this says what will happen if this stuff happens, if in configure, current configuration and transition, and then what would be the action. And based on that, we try to define it. And the definition was something like this for a specific case, for example, case 15 in the table. And then I, I left it to you to define the rest of the stuff and then check everything, rest of the pattern matching and check everything, test everything. And we suppose B should be non-zero, but if it is zero, we can add another root uh, row in the table. And then we said we need to have another function steps to consider all the possible transitions for a specific configuration for all the possible transition. What could be the possible configuration? So here uh, we have multiple transitions. We wrote that function, next function, and then we wrote a function which is accept, which says, if I have a configuration and if I have a state, a state, if it is accepted or rejected, uh, we define that function, the correct, uh, accept, sorry, and then the find pass, which starts from the configuration and goes ahead and finally accept or reject something for us. And finally, we define the run function based on that. Okay, that was the whole um, presentation and definition of how you can use Haskell to implement a Haskell function, uh, push down automata, non deterministic push down automata in Haskell. Definitely, you can use this technique to implement the push down automata. And also, you can use this technique to implement a finite uh, state automata also. But we decided to uh, work a little bit on the push down automata with Haskell. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. If you have found it interesting, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it, and so on. Thank you very much, and good luck.